Hey, I'm grateful that you dropped by, cruised by, for my daily devotions, June the 18th, 2024. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 1. We ignore 1st, 2nd Timothy and Titus. We should not. We do so at our peril. We should pay attention to them. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 12, Psalm 144, and 2 Kings chapter 5. We, we read the third chapter of 2 Thessalonians yesterday. And the third, the third verse, the th we read the third chapter of 2 Thessalonians. And the third verse of that chapter says this, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. The evil one's working us over all the time. But when we sell out to the Lord, the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen us and protect us from the nasty old devil. Hang on to that and never let go of that. First Timothy chapter one, after we pray, Father, speak to us, uh, address our lives, make a difference because we hear from you today as we look at your word. So speak with authority, crawl inside us with the truth we find here and change us from the inside out is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. I, I got my glasses uh, tightened so they hold on straight. I think I might be able to read with my glasses on, which is what's supposed to happen. It'll make it easier to preach now that I'm back to being a preacher all the time again. It's a wonderful thing. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, my true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus so that you may command certain men not to teach false doctrines any longer, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. These promote controversy rather than God's work, which is by faith. If it brings on controversy, it's not right, folks. If it, it should promote God's work and building people up. The goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Some have wandered away from these and turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers, the rebels, the ungodly, the sinful, the unholy, irreligious, for those who kill their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for adulterers, and for perverts, and slave traders, and liars and perjurers and for whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine that conforms to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which he entrusted to me. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength that he considered me faithful appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord Jesus was poured out on me abundantly along with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by following them, you might fight the good fight, holding on to faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected these and so have shipwrecked their faith. Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. Then Matthew chapter 12 Matthew chapter 12. Stay in the Gospels and Acts every day. We need it. Why? We need to hear what Jesus said. That's why. Okay. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what's unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was lawful for them to do only, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple desecrate the day and yet are innocent? 
I tell you that one greater than the temple is here. If you had known that the, what these words mean, I declare mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Going on from there, from that place, he went into their synagogue. And a man with a shriveled hand was there looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. They asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, if any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will he not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out and was completely restored, just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place. Many followed him, and he healed all their sick, warning them not to tell who he was. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out, till he leads justice to victory. In his name the nations will put their, will put their hope. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It's not only is it is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself, and how then can his kingdom stand? And if he drives out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do, you, do your people drive them out? So then... They will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions until he first ties up the strong man? Then he can rob his house. He who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you that every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Make a tree good and its fruit will be good, or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad, for a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks. <clears throat> the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a miraculous sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asked for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of, the huge, of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now one greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom, and now one greater than Solomon is here. When an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through and, through and, places, and, places, and places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the home unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. This is how it will be with this wicked generation. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are, out, are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of the Father in heaven is my brother and sister and money, mo and mother. 
Family are those who do the will of God. You've got to remember that. Psalm 144. Sliding into the end of Psalms where we start Proverbs. Psalm 144. One of the Psalms of David. Praise be to the Lord, my rock who trains my hands. Is that right? Should be Psalm 145. I thought I read that yesterday. Psalm 145. I made a mistake. How do you not make mistakes? Don't do anything. That's typically how that's done. I will exalt you, O my you, my God and King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another and will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. I will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to his promise and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of the Lord look to you. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him and who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked will be destroyed. Your mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Second Kings chapter 5. Second Kings chapter 5. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now, bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master should would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, the king of Aram replied, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel said, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to, and to, to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away, went away angry and, I, and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Parfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? Could, couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in rage. Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you to wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. 
Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Please accept now a gift from your servant. The prophet answered, As surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. And, and even though Naaman urged him, he refused. If you will not, said Naaman, please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as the pair of, a, of mules can carry. For your servant will never again make a burnt offering and sacrifice to any god but the god but the Lord. But may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Rimmon to bow down and he is leaning on my arm, and I bow there also. When I bow down in the temple of Rimmon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. Go in peace, Elisha said. After Naaman had traveled some distance, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, My master was too easy on Naaman, this Aramean, by not accepting from him what he brought. As surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something for him from him. So Gehazi hurried after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running toward him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. And everything, is everything all right? He asked. Everything is all right, Gehazi answered. My master sent me to say two, two, um, two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me in the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two sets of clothing. By all means, take two talents, Naaman answered. Naaman, uh, said Naaman. He urged Gehazi to accept them. Then he tied up the two talents of silver in two bags with two sets of clothing. He gave them to he gave them to two of his servants and they carried them ahead of Gehazi. When Gehazi came to the hill, he took the things from the servants and put them away in the house. He sent the men away and they left. Then he went in and stood before his master Elisha. Where have you been, Gehazi? Elisha asked. Your servant didn't go anywhere, Gehazi answered. But Elisha said to him, Was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money or to accept clothes, olive groves, vineyards, flocks, herds of men servants and maidservants? Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's presence, and he was leprous, as white as snow. Wow. little judgment there. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us today. Change our lives, Father, by what we heard is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.